So Tesla Model S uh, P100. And let's see, let's get over here to one of the pipes and the hoses. We're going back here through the wheel, the fender is off so we can see the suction line here. We can see where the suction line T and it has a tap in right here. We can see I have vacuum because if you look real carefully, you can see that the hose is collapsed. The vacuum is actually collapsing the hose. Then you can see where it goes off. There's the expansion valve and the firewall. You can see my connection right there. There's my low side section line into the section line. I'm connected, I'm pulling vacuum right there. The high side, there's the liquid line right there for the high side. Here's the compressor and the sound deadening blanket around it. So that's your electric compressor. Here's your section line. Here's your discharge. Here's your liquid line, suction line coming back. You can see where the liquid tees. And if you look right here, you have a T right here, a T right here. This goes, you go, why is there a T right here? Because there's another expansion valve. Let's follow this. So here's a liquid line coming off here from the secondary condenser. Remember those two condensers. You got your primary. This is your right one half of your condenser. This is your secondary. This is your other half of the condenser. Just imagine these two condensers put together and there's only one condenser. They're both half size condensers. There's nothing mysterious about them. If you stack this condenser on top of this condenser, that's basically what you're looking at. Instead of one long condenser, the way it comes down to the travel refrigerant and condenses, comes in at the top. Let me show you right, right there. You see that big pipe right there? So that's where it's coming in from the compressor. It's coming in here. It's doing its, it's doing its flow. Then it comes out. Here's the pipe right here, right down there at the bottom. It's still a vapor. It is not a liquid yet. So just think it went halfway through the condenser. It's basically just a cooled vapor. Then that cooled vapor is gonna make its way across in this number eight line, going all the way across and it's gonna go into this second condenser. So now we're coming over there and there we, right, my finger is touching it right there. There's a the lower, there's a the liquid, there's the vapor. That's your number eight coming in. Now it's gonna make, it's going to go up in the header. It's gonna make its passes. It's going to go into, here's the receiver dryer right here. This has the desiccant material and this is your receiver dryer. Out of here, somewhere in the very bottom, what we can't see because we have the plate on here, just like a conventional condenser, it's gonna go somewhere above this point. This is divided in half in the condenser right here. It's gonna come down here and the semi-liquid vapor is going to go into this receiver dryer. The liquid and the oil are gonna to fall to the bottom, go through the screen and the vapor will be at the top and this will backfill with a little bit of liquid in here. So the liquid will backfill in here a little bit depending on operation, it will depend. I wish these were clear so we can see them. I'd like to do that one day. Um, and then the liquid comes out the bottom, feeds across, the bottom few rows are your subcooling. So the bottom few tubes of refrigerant passages are for subcooling only. And then it'll come out your liquid line right here. Now let's go up on the other side of this rail. And you can see this black line right here, the piece of rubber, it goes right there and there's a T. Now the liquid is gonna feed that expansion valve going to that glycol plate heat exchanger. See, this is glycol. There's a glycol pump right there. Here's the other end of the glycol. There's your expansion valve. So this is where the refrigerant and the coolant switch thermal capacities where one goes into the other. So the heat will be pulled out of the glycol and absorbed into the refrigerant and then go back to the compressor. What well, you see this one going right there, it goes here. There's a compressor, it's not going right into the compressor. This is heading back to that T that we seen earlier. So if we come back here, there's the T. It's coming from the front that we were just looking for where it got the heat out of the glycol and it's dropping it in and it goes in that direction back to the compressor. This is the one from your cabin for the passenger compartment and you can see that line there going back to the compressor. Now, here we go, right back to the compressor, and that's where the two 
expansion valves the return from picking up heat return to and the air system for that cabin air filter there's the cabin air filter now my fingers from the tip of my finger there to there is nine inches so there's nine 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 and one extra inch that's how long that is and if we go nine It goes all the way up to about there so nine it's about 17 or 18 inches tall then we have wide and it's one inch deep that's your cabin air filter and here's the snorkel you can see how wide it is that goes to the cabin air and that picks up right you see those where are the openings at underneath there we go you see that opening right there? That's behind the filter. So that's after the air gets filtered. It travels up into the snorkel here. This tube, this ducting, this plenum, whatever you want to call it, as you can see it. And you see that square opening back there? That goes right into there like that. And that's how you get the filtered air into the cabin. That's how that works. Here's your 12 volt battery. And on some of the newer ones, these are 16 volt batteries. And I think they're up there now. And they're lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. I'm not sure what the 16 volt batteries are. We know they're using the ion in the back, but I, I can't remember what I read about the 16 volt batteries that they're now using in place of the 12 volt battery on the later model, some of the vehicles. Uh, here's your diverting valve one two three four we got a four-way valve here to determine in what direction that we need to get our hot coolant from and divert our cool coolant to come back and go into our plate heat exchanger and there's another water pump right there for the coolant and i will see you guys later i got to get off i got the other little Lexus to do right here. Still pulling the vacuum off this one too. And I gotta fill both these up now. Get out of here. See you guys.